Hello and welcome back to the Weird and Proud Podcast. It's James. Oh, was that early? James. You pre ejaculate. You pre. Well, you've been saying you wanted me to say my name. Well, you know what? I also have to say, multiple people have messaged me and said, thank God James finally finished (laughs) the beginning of that song. Okay? I'm going to You're giving people crazy. (laughs) You're driving the people crazy. It's weird. Hello, everyone. Welcome back. Hope you're having a weird, delicious day so far. And we have quite the show for you today. Weird, delicious. You've been into the e- delicious thing. I know. Lately. I don't. I feel like that's just like kind of like a fun, like cool thing for me to do. I think it's a great phase. I think it's a fun, cool phase. Yeah. James was like, "How are the dogs doing?" And I was like, "Crazy, delicious." It works. I feel like it's fun and cute. Yeah. Um. So we have a great show. I'm really excited about today's show. Again, like. I hope you guys are enjoying these kind of more like off topic, a little niche, random news stories that I'm thinking that aren't really like some of these aren't really like breaking prevalent news to, you know, an extent. Like I was kind of picking those before, like weird news stories that have recently come out. But then it's like I feel like you might hear them everywhere. You know, if you follow like the New York Post and you follow like a lot of times Barstool does a lot of those. I feel like they're, you know, there's a lot of podcasts that already do that kind of stuff. Yeah, they're not a surprise though. Right. And a lot of people like, I've already heard of that. So, you know, so I've started to kind of do a little bit more research and kind of research weird stuff that is news. Might not be like super, like just came out last week, but relevant things that are super weird and things that you might not hear about. Um, on other podcasts or other, you know, social media channels. So I've been trying to get a little bit creative. So hopefully you like them. Let me know. Comment below. Let me know if you've liked these, like the Sampoong. I feel like I've gotten a lot of good feedback about the Sampoong Mall weird, like that crazy a, story that from you, last week. You did a great job of researching it. You did a great job of telling the story. I loved hearing I tried. Well, yeah, it's just, again, like, it's something that I'm like, I have never heard of this. This sounds like, you know, something that... I like that you find are digging in for older ones rather than just the current trend. Yeah, because, again, it's just... Too many people can... It's already there. Like... Yeah. And then it's fun to look at these things and think about, wow, that happened back in the 90s, and we're still allowing crap like this to happen. Right, Right, and it's still technically like a lot of it obviously will still be relevant today um but like you know then we'll sprinkle in if there really are like some real big weird ones like the shark ray one i thought you know everyone's talking about it but it was interesting you know how it has come out about the whole you know there's a scientific explanation for it i think it's good for you to give your perspective on the popular stories too they can just be shorter because everyone's kind of heard exactly about them, but they might have not heard what you have to say right and what you have to say as the science science guru mine will just follow science you can find yours is just and... well i have i'm very interested to see what you think about the weird news story that oh, i have today I'm intrigued. You've because been teasing there's this a lot for like three days and you know i've been trying to find some stuff that is a little bit more science related too. And we were almost like talking about it might be fun to have like a segment or maybe we just kind of fine tune the news section and have this be a debate, but like finding like weird, like, is it, a, is it true or is it false? Like myth busters, you know, like, is it a myth or is it a bust? Weird or not real. Yeah, something weird or like not that. real. Yeah, so something like that where, you know, so who knows? We're playing around with ideas. Let us know your thoughts below if you like any of those. Um, but we're transitioning to the table of contents. I was listening to some of my sports podcasts, and then I st- I've i now started to notice how, how they transition. Shows transition. Absolutely. There's an art to it. A lot of them just dive in. They're like, and for our next topic, here's yeah, what we're going to cover. Yeah, they just like change. It's like, Arr! Yep. But you just don't want to make it too much of a dramatic stop and just change. Anyways, we're table of contents. Just give you an overview of what to expect. Table of contents. Maybe this is like, I got to like ping you to ask questions. Be like, Sam, what can we expect on this episode? You know, maybe that's like your job. Okay. Anyways, we'll discuss off camera. <laughs> but that's a great idea. You know, what can we expect on this episode? Well, you know, James, that's such a great question. So obviously we have some weird news where we're going to be talking about cellular memory. Okay. <gasps> cellular memory and this theory. Of course, there are people who say that this is a bunch of bullshit. 
But this theory that organ recipients have, in some cases, taken on personality traits or preferences or certain foods that they like of the donor. I'm still holding my breath. I'm so excited. So we're going to talk about that and some of the stories that have come out of that. And also, you know, what people say of how that's there's no way that this is true. We also, like, I really wasn't, like, thinking of a weird watch this week. Like, I don't know how crazy you guys are about the weird watch, but, like, I can't think of anything weird that we watched this week that was, like, worth, other than Love is Blind, which, like, you can find Love is Blind discussions everywhere. You know what? There's a good, if you didn't find something, you could ask me and say, James, did you have anything that people could watch? James, do you have anything that people could watch? In fact, I do. What? What have you watched without me? Why don't I just wait to tell them when we get to that segment? Wow, will you watch something without me? You'll you'll see when we get there. Okay. Um, and then of course we have some great weird secrets, and they're just great. They're a great little mix this week. We have a little bit of this, a little bit of that. Um, so why don't without further ado? There's a solid chance I'm gonna burp in the microphone. This don't do sh- that. That sparkling water is sparkling. Burpy. Yeah. Burpy licious. Sparkalicious. I'm just just spoiler alert. That might happen. Okay. Um, did you also want to ask me about my butthole? How is your butthole? Let's thank you so much for asking. My butthole for everyone on the edge of their on the edge of their seat butts. Which you are on the edge of your seat because you have to be. Because I have to be. My butthole's doing great. Um, me and Dr. Lamb, again, hopefully you watch the vlog. Um, we're just besties now. I'm going in there twice a week. I just really am kind of their star patient. And my It'll be two weeks this week on Tuesday, and I'm almost ready to work out. I think I'm finally getting better. I also had some Arnica gel, too, that I've been putting on the bruise that I forgot that I had. And that's been helping. Been, again, Dr. Lamb, they have, like, all these little fun machines that I've been going on. And got to get up to Dr. Lamb. Dr. Lamb, you're the man. He, like, apparently, too, now... Like, people who go in there, like, people have messaged me and been like, I've gone in and seen him since. Ah. And he's like, oh, am I like a, am I like a star now? I'm like, <laughs> yeah, you are. You are, Dr. Lamb. That's fantastic. So, very cute stuff. Um, You're going to need to interview Dr. Lamb about the organ transplant thing. That was an <gasps> interesting interview. Just came up with that. Oh, my God. I You're should literally welcome. ask Dr. Lamb what he thinks about organ transplants. I just said that. <laughs> I know. I was really- Shut up. I was repeating it to to remember it in my brain. To have a memory in my cells. I wanted my cells to remember Cellular this memory. moment so that I don't forget to ask Dr. Lamb what he thinks. That's such a great question. He you could will just know. put it in your phone. I'll remember it. Because then I'll have to look at my phone while I remember to look at my phone. I'm put it in my phone. Okay, you put it in your phone. Okay. Without further ado, let's get into transition transition we are to uh what did i do i was like weird news it's the weird news it's news and it's weird is this elevator music yeah well i need like a weird news i did something last week i can't remember what i did do you remember no my cellular weird, memory isn't kicking weird. in your cellular memory yeah my cellular your hippocampus your hippocampus isn't working james you are gonna literally be so proud of how scientific i'm about to sound <laughs> I just, i'm interested to see where you tie the hippocampus into this so um james i watched videos by neurosurgeons this is again a wormhole that i decided to go down and it sparked it was it was sparked by a video that i saw on tiktok and it was a story of an organ transplant and just like kind of a crazy coincidence that ends up happening and i was like you know, I saw some comments about, you know, some other people that had similar experiences and this idea of cellular memory. And I went down a deep, deep, deep rabbit hole. So the first video I saw, um, if you're on TikTok, his name is Breath Daddy. Okay. So he had, he had told the story that I'm going to, and I'm going to tell a couple of these stories that I've now found since that really like, oh, you know, you could see it as a coincidence. Like a lot of these stories, could be a coincidence. And of course, as I get into this idea of cellular memory, there are, of course, many people against it and that this is a crazy theory. There's no way this is possible. Um, And of course, too, when you do get an organ transplant, you're on a lot of drugs afterwards. 
you know, for, like including especially like steroids, prednisone, which can make you really hungry. You can have some changes in personality. So, you know, take that with a grain of salt. That's kind of the devil's advocate of these stories and like, of this idea. Like a zombie? Like a zombie. What do you mean like a zombie? I mean, can you have that major change that you become like a zombie? They're I don't hungry, know. hungry. They have changes in behavior. Aren't those what? indicators that what? someone's becoming a zombie? Are you? I'm trying to throw a paranormal side in here for you. <laughs> do you throw believe in, in zombies? Your bone. Do you believe in zombies? No. Okay. Um, okay. So there are now over like a hundred, maybe even more at this point. And you, it's hard to document these, but there are hundreds of cases of organ transplant recipients taking on personality traits, taking on likes and beliefs of the donor that gave them the organ. Okay. And it's called cellular memory. Some people call it DNA memory. And this is the video that I saw from breath daddy that got me looking into this cases and this is you can google these even if you just google cellular memory there are now like like you'll find hundreds of different stories youtube videos articles studies on this topic so the story was and this is kind of went viral and was a famous case of this guy named terry coddle and he was married to a woman named cheryl coddle And unfortunately, he suffered with mental health issues his whole life, and he did end up taking his own life. Um, And it was a self-inflicted gunshot wound, so he did donate his organs. And also, just as, like, a side note, too, something to also remember is, like, an organ transplant donor, an organ donor, they have to still be alive, to get the organs taken out of them. You can't be dead and donate organs. So a lot of these cases, they're always like cases where, you know, and in this case, you know, he did enough damage where he put himself in a coma. It wasn't going to look good. You know, they're going to have to take him out. He was on life support. And that's when they have to take the organs. Mm-hmm. Like, you know, you can't be dead to just for someone to take an organ. So just also in the back of your mind. Too. But he... Uh, the organ re- donor recipient, his name was Sonny Graham. He ended up t- getting his heart. He did a new heart transplant. And Sonny Graham was, you know, after he had recovered from his surgery, he ended up reaching out to Cheryl, the husband of Terry, to thank her for, you know, being like, thank you for your husband's, you know, gift of a new heart. I have this new, li- you know, I wasn't going to live like much more time I you know I'm just so grateful blah blah so they get together and they meet up for coffee and Sonny says that like when he first met her met Cheryl it was like he you know had known her his whole his life whole life yeah and he instantly was attracted to her and they end up hanging out they end up dating they end up getting married Wow. So they're married, but not long after, he starts having mental health issues. Oh, weird. He has depression. He's going to therapy. He's never had these issues before. He ends up, about 10 years later, taking his own life the same way that Terry did. So, coincidence, weird you know, just that it happened that her husband, two husbands, you know, like, of course, people are commenting on the video below being like, oh, maybe we should look into Cheryl, which is Of course, horrible. that would be where you got to go. Yeah, but it's like a self-inflicted gunshot. It's not like you can, yeah, yeah, yeah. like, you know, like he was poisoned or whatever. So, yeah, so that's kind of a crazy. That was the first story that I'd seen that Breath Daddy had talked about. And that's when I was like, wait, what? So that was like the first like story that I had seen from this guy who, you know, had talked about this idea of cellular memory. So there are literally so many stories about these. And I'll, I'll just talk about the ones that, you know, are again, kind of like the most, the craziest. And it's like, could it be a coincidence? Is it not? This one, this story, actually this woman ended up writing a book. So the book is called a change of heart. And it's from, it happened in 1988. This woman, Claire, had a heart transplant okay okay she gets out of surgery and her immediate thought is that she really wants kfc and a beer sounds amazing she had never had kfc before but she (laughs) wanted fried chicken and she was like i want kfc and a beer 
she'd never been a beer drinker. She'd always drank wine her entire life. And that was all she wanted a beer. And she wanted KFC. <laughs> so funny. And she would have these vivid dreams of being like almost on like the back of a motorcycle, like with this guy going like through downtown streets and like just driving around through this town. Okay. And she would have these night after night after night. Finally, she reaches out to see who her donor was. Oh, and in in the dream too, the guy on the bike with her was like had introduced himself and kept saying like, "Thank you, my name is Tim. Thank you." So she's like, "All right, I gotta reach out to this to the donor." Okay. And turns out, it was an eighteen year old boy who had died on a motorcycle, motorcycle and loved his favorite food was KFC and he loved drinking beer. And so, and like they have an interview too. You can look it up. It was on BBC that they did this whole interview where like the mom is now like friends. The mom of the son of Tim is friends with this woman, Claire. She writes a book about her experience. And, you know, of course, too, like people are like, you know, because she kept saying how she feels so much younger than she is. She has this new zest on life. She's like super confident now when she used to be shy before. And, you know, of course, people can say, well, she got a new organ. Of course, she like feels completely different and feels younger and feels more confident. But, you know, the mom of Tim is like, but that's exactly how Tim was. She is similar. And like they hang out all the time. And she's like, I feel like I'm with Tim when I'm with Claire. And these are all done by this one person that did all this research. Like, no, combined. these are numerous different studies. But is it, stories. Did you find the information all in one place? Was it? Just like with the so with the Korean tragedy, yeah, there was one particular podcaster that probably did a lot of the background research. Was there one? There was an article by the BBC that did a whole and kind of like yeah, that showed different ones of them. But then I just was going through different YouTube videos and and different interviews, different examples. Yeah, it wasn't like one that had all of these. I was hoping. Which would be kind of cool, like an investigation. Like, these are probably some of the more popular cases. If you do Google cellular memory organ transplant stories, these ones will pop up. Is like, you'll see them, like, in different articles or, like, kind of, like, whenever someone, you know, even brings this up as, like, you know, a new story that came out, like, at the bottom of the article, they'll be like, and this comes from other stories, including a husband who, you know. So, basically, what you did in the science world is what you call a meta-analysis. Exactly. That's Where exactly what I did. Already existing studies that are related to something, compare them all together to find similarities and differences. Exactly. And perhaps a new study will come. Yeah, Very and cool. they popped like they pop up a lot. And even like on there's some TikTokers, like this Breath Daddy has now made other videos of these um of these stories. And of course people are commenting and sharing their stories. So he's kind of sharing, you know, other people, you know, on TikTok who have commented. Um, but there are just so many. This is another one that was crazy that went pretty viral. This was like back in the early 2000s. But this was an eight year old girl received the heart of a murdered 10 year old girl. Okay. Okay. Oh, no. Yeah. Every night she would have these horrible night terrors. This eight year old girl. She would have dreams of like being strangled, of just being like tormented. And she was, like, having such poor sleep that her parents were like, we have to bring her to a psychiatrist because they had never seen it before. So her parents bring her to the psychiatrist. And the psychiatrist, like, her dreams were so vivid. She could explain, like, the man who was doing it to her. It's the same man every night. Same, like, place that she was in. She could describe. It was, like, some sort of warehouse. She could describe the time of day and, like, how she felt. She was cold. And they were so vivid that the psychiatrist was like, okay, she's, I'm going to go to the police. And by, this was a still unsolved murder of this 10-year-old girl. The police were ended up by the clues that this girl had given in her dreams, were able to find the man. He confessed to the murder, and they solved the murder of the 10-year-old what? girl. What? That's crazy. Yeah. That no, I need to read. I got to read more about that one. That yeah. one is the other one. It sounds great, like a movie, but that one piqued my interest. Like that's like a book. It should be a movie. It should be a movie. No, one hundred. And there are well, and that's what I was gonna make up. There are movies too. There's a movie called Red Eye. Is that the one you were gonna? No, there's another older one that's kind of a campy, almost comedy horror, but it's really funny. Jamie 
pretty sure it's either Seth Green or Jamie Kennedy. I can never remember between those two, isn't yeah. it? Yeah. Yeah. Anyway. But yeah, just look up the case of the eight year old girl organ transplant and you'll you will find it. It's like a known it's not I didn't just that like find it on a Reddit I'm thread somewhere. That. Um, but there were just so many stories. There was a story of a 47 year old man. And these are like, I, some of these two are interviews and this was one that was an interview 47 year old man. And he was just like, kind of like a hardened man. He needed a, a heart transplant. A lot of these two are heart transplants. And I'm going to talk about that in a second, but, um, he received a transplant after a surgery. He had this, he played classical music all the time. And even his kids were like, since when do you love classical music? And he's like, I just, it just relaxes me. So always like when he was around the house, he had classical music playing and he never had before. Come to find out the organ donor was a violinist. I was just going to say. And was buried with his violin. Oh, and he was going to, he was 17 and he was going to go to college to be a violinist. to like. What happened to him? I don't, oh, um. He was, it was a bike accident. It was some sort of car bike accident for this Careful one. Careful bikes on the road. Wear your helmets. 17 year old. Yeah, exactly. 17. And That's like you. the mom, again, the mom of the 17 year old, like now is like friends with a 47 year old. Who took. So there are a lot of these heartwarming stories. Um, Can I tell about one that I saw on the what? interwebs? Yeah, please it's do. One of those like good news things that I love to follow on Instagram. Yep. And it, it's, I mean, this one's out there and I'm sure everyone's seen it. It's where, uh, the uh, daughter uh, how do i describe this the best way uh, this woman gets married and the man who walked her down the aisle was the man who received her dad's heart in a heart transplant oh yeah it, well, even... that one's around so i'm sure that other people have seen it but that kind of thing is very touching like because you're saying they're all friends with each other it is yeah it's kind of yeah, a way you to get people... to live on in, in other a way words, i'm selling i'm a i'm an organ donor of on course my me too yeah everyone should um, but there's another story too of same thing, like a guy who gets a heart donor and he goes to meet the family and the dog and the dog like recognizes him right away. The dog of the now that's true. Dogs for sure. Yeah. And there's like a video going right like went yeah, viral about that too. Um, but just so many other stories, like a guy, you know, never w- even know knew a lick about music, got a donor, a heart donor from a guy who was a singer songwriter after surgery started writing music and a lot of times you know some people say these are kind of the devil's advocates saying well you know they could have maybe just heard that their donor liked to play music and maybe they're doing it to you know kind of help their love move on either way it's kind of gorgeous it's one of the first thoughts i had in my head and it's a definite possibility that'd be yeah. the first place you'd go to was continue and then i'll give my rant yeah well and then there was you know so then i keep doing more i'm like how legit is this so i even found an interview that a neurosurgeon and you can go on its city it was like city health clinic again if you just like look up cellular memory you'll all these will pop up but and i can even put them in the youtube like underneath so you guys i can have all the links to all the videos um so you can listen to them and read it yourself but there is a a man who got a heart transplant and he is talking to this neurosurgeon, he, you know, cause he's like, how can, can you explain some of this? And he was like, cause you know, I was a steak eater. I was an avid hunter. I loved meat. It was like, you know, I ate meat protein three times a day. Yep. And after my surgery, I couldn't even look at me. I became vegan. And he said, he started craving cigars and he <laughs> never smoked cigars. He hated the smell of like um, of cigars, any type of cigarette smoke. And the neurosurgeon was like, because your donor was vegan and loved smoking cigars. And there is this idea. So this is where I'm going to kind of get into a little bit of the scientific stuff, but not too much. Ooh, I'll take over from there. Yeah, well, I was going to say, what were you going to say? Because no, those you, are kind of like most of the stories, but your, similar I ideas. first because I do have a few like book references to bring up to this involving cellular studies. Yeah. So like, yeah, there was a. The Body of, Keeps the Score. Is that where you were going to say? No, one of your books? no, no, much, much deeper than that one. Oh, okay. but it's good. OK. Um. So, again, of course, there are many people that say 
that the reason that this happens is different medications that you can be on post-surgery. You're also getting a new organ. So, of course, you're going to feel better. You might have some changes in your personality. Um, so, you know, and there are some people I posted, I did post this on Instagram, not too like long ago, just to see if there were any last minute stories. A lot of people sending in the same stuff, cravings that have changed, you know, certain foods that they like now that they didn't like before allergies, a lot of allergies passed over to like one girl had messaged me and said she loved bread before had no problem with gluten. Now she's celiac and she can't have gluten after her surgery. Wow. So just like things like that. But of course, it could just be coincidence. It could be, again, you're getting a new organ in your body. So again, it's still a heavily debated thing. And a lot of even transplant nurses had messaged me even like, I've never seen this. I've been a transplant nurse for 10 years. So, you know, take it all with just a grain of salt. But there are plenty. There's even one of the articles that I had pulled up and got a lot of information from was from a pub med, which if you know, that means it's from the National Library of Medicine. So it's like a third party, like well, like validated journal. Very familiar with PubMed. Love PubMed. Love PubMed. James is a big fan. It's like his However, favorite thing to read. However, there's things they put out there that aren't necessarily correct. So that's okay. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it doesn't mean it's truth. Truth. But there is, ever since like the 17th century, um, scientists have tried to study this idea that memory lives in all of our organs. And our cells are, I mean, again, I brought up The Body Keeps the Score, too. Great book. This is, that's more, if you haven't read that or haven't heard of it, it's a lot more of like kind of like a self-help book and more around how anything especially traumatic that happens to you takes place, you know, in your entire body. And a lot of times when things flare up, it could be from a past memory and from past traumas. So it's just like how to heal your mind and your body. And it's really, you know, again, this idea, yeah, like your body does remember things that happen to you. Your brain is connected to every cell in your body. And so there's always this idea that has been studied that each organ has its own memory. And like even this neurosurgeon was explaining, like, we know that cells hold memory. Obviously, our brain holds memory. Hippocampus, where our memories are stored. Ooh, getting close. We'll, what? We'll, t- we'll touch on that. <laughs> but um, also your immune system. Like, that's how vaccines work. That's how, like, you get chicken pox when you're younger and then your body remembers you had chicken pox. So it builds up an immunity to it. So we know that the body holds memory. What? Can I bring up something on that? Just that part when what? you talked about. Uh, not only does it hold memory, but if you think about it, immunity, when a woman has a child, immunity is passed from the woman through. That's why natural birth, like going through the birth canal, can be an important part of immunity to a baby because yep. it gets different, well, which is part of that organ transplant with the allergy thing is a very intriguing Yes. Part. Well, and the same thing, too. They always talk. You always hear a lot about generational trauma, mm-hmm. generational, you know, trauma that's passed down cells. The same thing, you know, what happened to your parents when, it, you know, any relationships or just anything. It's that trauma can be passed down through your DNA as well. So it just does bring into a lot of interesting discussions and just, you know. It's it's a deep thought question of like some of where I'm going to go. You're going to have to help keep me organized and maybe help me to touch in on some of the parts. If you have any questions of if you have any questions that you think the listeners would like of where else to study some of this wormhole. Yeah, I have so many ideas. But here's a few. These are two things that are it, these were my favorite things to study in college. I was basically a bio psych major. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right? Yep. Cross cultural psychology was my absolute favorite psychology class studying differences and similarities between people and my favorite my senior thesis was in genetics and it was on the nucleus it was on dna it was on endoreduplication duplication and wild rice and when you look at uh how a cell works there was a paradigm shifting book and study from a guy that he was one of them but there were many the book is called the biology of belief by bruce lipton and if you are an any way, shape, or form interested in biology or anything like that, if you're a nurse out there, read the biology of belief. The reason I bring up that one is because it does talk about some thoughts and ideas that were rejected in the 50s and 60s. Nobody believed that this sort of thing could exist. Well, And there are still plenty of people that don't believe this stuff, like this exists at all. What he started talking about and what eventually became what we call epigenetics or the ability of our genes 
to change, right? That old debate. And I'm not sure what you learned in school, but me being 10 years older, there was a distinct debate between nature and nurture, right? Yeah. But showing now there is more proof out there showing how related they are. All of the cells in our body come from the same DNA. If you look up stem cell research, that's why that's so controversial, right? Yeah. But it does all come from the same place. And there are ways that DNA can turn on and off just based on the environment that it's in, whether it's food that we eat or whether that's an environment that we're in outside. Yep. Our yep. cells can change. DNA is the thing that changes within the cell. To yep. Have a phenotypic or what you can see change. And so what we're looking at now is actual human behavior changing, yeah. which is a hell right. of a lot more complex than yep. like you getting tan because you're out in melatonin changes. Right. right? Yeah, yeah, so yeah. when you're looking at that human behavior change, you'd have to really look at is the is I'll use the term energy, right? Because it's the well, that was what someone firing. energy is not created nor destroyed. Energy can't be created nor destroyed. People were commenting that too. Yeah. And if the if the way that the neurons, the nerves fire, yeah. right? Still same the, the same DNA that's in your neurons is in other parts, right? So if that if those neurons start firing and teach the body to fire in a new pattern yeah you're going to copy that new pattern right that's all that happens your body is just a series of electro little electronic well so what neurology movements that changes our patterns in the way that we do things well they call it there's a biological theory about a presence called neuropeptides which are the way the body speak to other bodies which is the way the brain speaks to other bodily organs. And then the organs replay the information back to the brain. And the heart would be one of the most powerful ones of those because you have what's called the sino, the SA node, the sinoatrium. Well, that's why they see so many of them more likely with heart transplants. Because that, if the, if the connection, if your internet connection, it's such a strong connection. Yeah. Yeah. So if you think of the brain has a part of it, that's like the internet, right? The router in a way would be your hippocampus. It doesn't, the hippocampus only takes in information coming to it from the bloodstream and other sources. And then the hippocampus sends signals to the brain to make changes to the rest of the body. Right. And memory in the hippocampus can be distributed to long-term and short-term memory. There's a certain term for it. Memory compression, I think might be it. Oh yeah. Memory compression. You can fact check that. But what it, it is possible that I don't know if this whole system were to change your entire nervous system, the way it fires, if that electronic sequence were to come over, that is a possibility. That's what, and that's the idea of it. No, here's I love idea. how you just nerded out. You just literally, it was like something just clicked that you just like gotten to. I hope some of it made Mr. sense. That's James. The part. I keep saying James needed to be a teacher. It's two of my favorite. Have, Those are two of my favorite subjects, human behavior and neurology. I know. I no, literally, it. you this like I can't believe you were never a teacher in life. Like that's what you should have been. So you could just like nerd out about stuff. You need to read the biology of belief. Great book. We have it downstairs. Yeah, let me just pull that out really quick. No, I have my. I have, sm- it I, have a, I have a dragon novel to read. Actually. I'll read your dragon novel if you read the biology of belief. And it's only like a three hundred page book, so it's awesome. okay. So here's Great. the here's the science part. Then back to okay, this keep is it, the part I believe more. I'll keep yeah, it short. keep it layman's terms here. It has to do here. with the, the the nurses that were ten year organ. Oh, people who the, didn't see I'm on it because the, the other side of it is of course. Yeah, you got to sh- what your thoughts on the other side. Hundreds of thousands of organ transplants that are happening. What percentage totally. of this is bad, right? Right. Right. It's like if you go to drink Pepsi and you're like, well, four people told me they didn't like Pepsi, and a billion people drink Pepsi. Yeah, 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 yeah. Right. Yeah. What are you going to believe? Yeah. So there's yeah. To do, and there's a, a, the reason I teased the meta analysis is because I was going to talk about it. What you would have to do is look up and randomly, it has to be a. And it's hard study. to do too because it is like, what, how do you prove that someone liked a food before versus now? Well, it's also that medical records are usually protected. And HIPAA. Well, and like both parties do have to be open to it. There are a lot of people that say, I don't want to be contacted. And you, yep, exactly. And you can't, and when you are finally questioning them or thinking about it, you can't quote unquote, lead the witness. You can't give them the idea of it. Right. Like if someone already had finds out that. Because I would think it's definitely more plausible that it isn't because of the organ transplant. Yeah. That I think the organ transplant could help it to occur, but it's way more plausible that you thought this person knew that person like that or did those type of things Yeah, because you might've heard it or read it but you're in such a traumatic place before you're going to receive an organ transplant. Yeah. You may not have remembered all those things that you knew about that person. Right. And- but it is like, you know, 
And then, you know, of course, it's, it's just like anything where it's like, but of course, like, how do you, you know, the story about the eight year old girl, you know, it's just but and maybe can, there is some there's more of a spiritual em- element to some of this, you know, some more of that kind of stuff. And, and people say the strongest sense tied to memory is smell. That's incorrect. It's emotion. Well, if it's a sense emotion, right? Emotion. You can right, change totally. how you're acting right now. If I bring up that funny picture of you in berets with your black rooster. Right. Yeah. That right there, your whole mood, your entire nervous system changed just because of a thought. So if there is a thought that that person liked or didn't like something right. that you knew about that, there's, there's a way it can change. Yeah. Anyways, crazy stuff. Interested to hear your guys' thoughts. Also, if any of you are transplant nurses or if any of you, hey, have actually had a transplant or had a family member that has and have heard a story or maybe... You know, there are, of course, plenty of people, too, that messaged me. My dad had a transplant. I had a transplant. I didn't notice any changes, but. I would love to hear from the nurses that haven't seen anything, because guess what? I got your back a little bit in this one, so. But it also, like, you agree, like, cellular memory is a thing. It it 100% is a thing. There's no denial. There's plenty of studies out there to show it. If somebody says it isn't, there's plenty to show it that it does. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. All right. Let us know. Comment below what your thoughts are, what you think, if you have any stories. Um, and if you want, call in, which we'll get into secrets in a second. Big bite. <laughs> you just, oh, someone had messaged me too that ever like there are people who really think that that's like a recording that we just like put in. That's no, I that's James just time. yelling. I know. That's I in the back. trying to do it the same Thank way. Thank God you're not yelling into the mic. Um, okay, did you have a weird watch or like what's the deal? I do have a weird watch. Okay, we're transitioning to weird watch. And spoiler alert, it's related to what we just talked about. What? A little bit about human behavior and a little bit about uh, cross-cultural psychology. Okay. This is a weird watch, and it's a different way to think about a watch. It's not a TV watch. Okay. It's a... Uh, what is it like? Eaves, it's a it's a eavesdropping. It's no, it's you. So, you always say I, I love, love to eavesdrop. Watch. You love people watching. You love eavesdropping. You're so good at it. I love it. This is a great people watch. Okay. And I heard this and now I can't unthink it. It's one of those things. Right. OK. So I was talking with another fellow guy who's kind of a nerd and he's like, oh, my God, I heard the most interesting thing. He goes, I think you would love this. He said one of the first things that they teach future spies in the CIA. OK. Is not to lean on things. I was leaning on a counter when we were talking and he said, I have to tell you this because now I can't unsee it. It's an American what? it's an American thing to lean on stuff, especially when you're talking to other people. Yeah, totally. So it's kind of like a body language thing. You're leaning into like listen this to This is your weird watch of the week. Watch body language with people leaning on stuff. Oh, a you're, bar okay. would be the most simple example. Okay, of but like why do they tell leaning? CIA agents not to lean? Because they're gonna be spies in other countries. It's an American trait. Other spies will know that they're American if they're leaning because other spies are taught to pick out the behaviors. The things that they have to change the most is nothing to do with how they look, talk, or any of that. That's simple. It's the subconscious behaviors that actually other spies that throw off. Found out yeah. More. That's your weird. New- so I wonder why Americans do that. And I haven't looked up any of that, and I've been meaning to because I think it'd be incredibly interesting. Wait, wait, wait. If there's anyone on here who's not American, if you're a CIA, do spy, you lean? We won't. I don't know. You. That That's really, that's so interesting. I, think it, I thought it was fascinating and i didn't tell you about it all i literally heard about okay, it like this Tuesday should be or Wednesday. we at one point had like a james weird corner where you found something but then you just like found like roman empire weird shit but, but the roman is... empire was trending at the time <laughs> i was trying to listen for no, no 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 i, I know I'm, I'm giving you a hard time but it was like maybe we like bring like you have to bring like a weird fact but i also think that we can do more than just a, everyone like even my sports shows are doing and again i'm listening to them like what do we do and what do they they, they do weird TV watches for the week. Like they're even talking about Peacock and all these other things. What to Peacock. Watch but I thought, what if the weird watch was also just some observations out there in the real weird world? Weird observations. And this one is see when people lean. Or maybe we need to watch like 15 minutes of a European movie or show and see if anyone's leaning on it. I do. Well, yeah. Let us know if there are any people who are out there who aren't from America. And if you're a CIA you lean? Agent, and have in. you ever noticed we'll keep that? you anonymous. Yeah, if you're a CIA, don't worry. We won't tell we anyone got who your you back. are. Interesting, James. Thank you for that. Just you're welcome. That I was thought. weird and random. I thought that would tie in nicely. 
but now I can't unsee it. And any time I'm leaning on something, I'm like, I'm going to get busted. I'm going to get busted. Someone's I'm a secret gonna agent. Know. They're going to know I'm American. Know. Thank you, James. That was gorgeous. Um, now it's time for secret, 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 Weird secrets. Hell yeah. Hell yeah. Um, okay. So we have some great weird secrets today. First, if you have any weird secrets or again, if you have any organ transplant stories, call us in, let us know at speakpipe. That's speakpipe.com slash weird and proud pod. Again, speakpipe.com slash weird and proud pod. I've but, often thought if people did like my little scream, which apparently there is some feedback on it, we should try to sell that soundtrack though. Speakpipe. Yeah. Oh, to speakpipe. Yeah, use it. They can use I it in their commercials. I don't think they have commercials. That's stupid. They should. They just have you yelling. Um, first of all, I just want to say that someone had sent in a secret. And you had me on the edge of my seat. You were like talking about because we had brought up last week about hotels and motels and like how oh, weird shit always goes down. And like always. you don't know what happened in your room. Someone calls in and was like, my parents owned a motel and the craziest stuff happened there. Stuff like. And then it just dropped off. <gasps> yeah. And call I was like, again, and I kept re trying to play it and being like, wait, did I miss? So please call back and tell us what the hell happened at your parents motel. I need to know. That is always so fascinating. That was always like a dream. I feel like they always romanticize that in shows but like owning a motel or a hotel, you know, or like a bed and breakfast. I still would love like, you know, a little main bed and breakfast with a farm. I would love to cook breakfast for our guests. But again, just like weird shit. I feel like, you know, you just never know what's going to happen in Absolutely. that room. Absolutely. Well, I used to have a ton of hotel stories. I worked in a hotel as a manager. Oh, yeah. Right. yeah. I forgot about that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. When I was in the bartending slash restaurant world there was a fancy radisson hotel i can tell you a ton of stories i've told I you about, about that i'll tell you the 50 cent story sometime when 50 cent stayed there oh you actually did tell me i that. told you the 50 cent story is hilarious. you just had like a bunch of bitches oh my god just just to be Lined very up. stereotypical at the end they had gone up to their floor they rented a whole floor and a bunch of i'm just, i'm just gonna bluntly say it a bunch of big white women showed up like at the end <laughs> after everybody that was up there that was going to be there and they're like where's fitty's room at i want to go see fitty he said we could come up like going cra- like literally that went on for like an hour oh my god well, and that's then like way crazy. more bonkers things at, then the, the night was way weirder after that so, what? yeah oh that was a crazy that's thing. crazy um okay anyways to hollow notes too i told you that yeah yeah i have heard that but no i want to hear about murders james I don't care about 50 cents. No murders. Damn. One guy did die of a heart attack. Uh, well, that, you know, again, any death, crazy, just crazy stuff. Okay, so we're going to get into our secrets. Again, Motel Girl, please call back in. Um, this one cracks me up because this is my life. Um, hold on. Let me just, where did it go? Where did it go? Okay. All right, James, are you ready for the first secret? Bring it. Here we go. First of all, love the podcast, and I had to pause it and tell you my weird secret. So I have huge main character energy. I'm a very extroverted person, but something I like to do when I'm alone, which isn't very often, is to pretend that I am in a movie and it's all about me. And I do this almost every day. Um, When I walk down the street, I have a little pep in my step just just in case everyone's recording me. And when I'm driving down the road, I, you know, put on music and I sing as if I'm being recorded, like it's going to be in in a feature film, you know, like when you're a kid and you're driving with your parents in the back seat and you're singing and Hillary Duff or something. It's kind of like that energy. And I don't know when I'm at the club and I'm dancing, I pretend that all eyes are always on me and it sounds really conceited but it's actually just innocent fun and it kind of gets me going and now that i'm talking about it i'm realizing that i'm glad no one else knows besides the internet um this cracked me up because this is relatable and i think a lot of people would say at some point in their lives they have pretended they're on a reality show have you 
No, you've never like been just like walking and you're like, what if I was just like being filmed right now? Or, like even as a kid, like in the car, like when it's raining, you're like, oh, even, so. so the one I thought about right away was a great leader of an old boss of mine used to always say to us when you're speaking around anything involving the business, when you're at the business, when you're talking to staff, when you're talking to other managers, uh, speak as if you're being speak as if you're sitting on CNN. Yeah. Speak as if you're being interviewed on CNN. So keep it simple, keep it short and get your point across. Yep. But also don't say things that are going to be controversial. Like right. it keeps it's very streamlined. That way. Yeah. That's such a relatable thing. I like know I've heard people like send in this is a secret before of like just always thinking like you're on a reality show. I like to think I'm being interviewed, like especially like if I'm, I don't know, like on the topic of something like or like especially before going to bed at night, like I think about like if I'm on like like the Tonight Show and they're like interviewing me and like how I would like respond and like pretend I'm responding. In my Don't head. you have old family footage of you doing that with Ian? Yes. Yeah. That needs to get on the Internet. More. I know. I have so many good videos. of me Those as a old kid. videos are hilarious. I used to love like the idea of yeah, like being on the Tonight Show and like getting interviewed and like how I would respond to like questions. I have a few more thoughts on this. If what? You're done. Yes, I'm done. What are your thoughts? One, what if she, and my like heart Like the goes Truman out Show, her, like Truman Show vibes. What if she had an accident and she had to donate an organ and it went to an introvert? What <laughs> would happen to that? Here's part two. I think that's actually very, very healthy to have because she's going to, it's going to help keep her, right? You know, some of those days when you're feeling a little down and maybe you don't want to get as ready, like she's going to make sure she's ready to be. On right. No, I'm like, I think it, it's super healthy. I really do. It is. And it is a good way to like pep yourself up. Like people always say romanticize your life. I think that's a great. I think it's super. I love that. And like it does like get you excited to do things when you're thinking about it that way or like, you know, yeah, it's like even when I'm writing. Like, I think of, like, certain movie scenes. I'm like, oh, that looks gorgeous to write that way. So, like, I like to, you know, like, set up a little spot, light a candle, put some music on. Uh, So, it, like, sets a scene and, like, does make you want to do it more. I completely agree. Mine was all about – mine wasn't movies or ever. It was pro sports. Like, well, that too. I'm sure. Well, playing sports, you're thinking, like, if you're being on camera. My favorite thing about sports ever was being a pitcher. When I was on the mound – you were I was thinking you were on TV. Major League Baseball. Totally. These days, because the NFL is done, I'm picturing being in the Green Bay Packers draft room for the NFL draft. Yeah, Green Bay. If, does selections. anyone have any contacts for the Packers? James, I'm trying to get James to like meet a Packers person. I'm trying to. There's that a, would be my. There's a former Packer. I'd be using my platform. There's for a good. former Packer that's part owner of a gym in town. Really? And I want to go. I want to go talk to them about their marketing, but I'm afraid <gasps> to talk to him because he's a Packer. You should, James, you've got to go and wear all your Packers the, stuff. You know what it is? It's at the Zen house. Yeah, now, yeah, yeah. I, I don't know if the Packers was like his. I Sometimes guys don't like the teams that they played on because they release them, right? So right. I, I don't know if they liked being a Packer or not. Yeah, yeah, One of yeah. my other friends from an old job, and I still talk to him all the time, he used to play for the Vikings and the 49ers a long time ago. Oh, yeah. that's cool. Um, all right, James. Are that you was ready? a wonderful call. Sorry. We t- wonderful call. Yeah, we made it all about us, but really it's all we about made it, you. Yes. And that was a gorgeous call. And re- again, relatable. I love that she just had to pause it, stop and call in. That's taking action. I know. I love that. Yeah. I, I do you love that. Girl. Yeah. People no. Because I think that? you go, girl. Can I say that? Yeah. No, right. I love that for you. Um, okay. Are you ready for the second voicemail? Prepared. All right. Here we go. Okay. So weird kind of joke that my mom and one of her ex-husbands played on my one of my older sisters is she was notorious for leaving her underwear, her clothes, just stripping down for the shower and leaving them in the bathroom. And they told her time after time, pick up your damn clothes. Well, she kept leaving them. So they found some kind of worms and put them in her underwear and told her that she had worms coming out of her and they were left in her underwear and to go and get them. And she panicked and thought she had worms coming out of whichever hole I'm not sure where she thought but she thought she had worms and it was the best thing because I was like five thinking oh my gosh like if I leave my clothes in here like well I get worms too and now as an almost 30 year old adult thinking good good lord like it worked but like how traumatizing but guess what she never left her clothes in the bathroom again love you bye so I was cracking up listening to this because I've heard of someone else doing this. 
And what? I had also just seen a video of a girl on TikTok. And I need to know now, this is your sister. She's on TikTok going, did anyone else as a kid use to find worms in their underwear? and people like you know everyone's stitching it being like um worm lady call back in yeah i gotta find we the name of it because i just saw someone stitching it TikTok. do you know the name on tiktok i can't all? remember i'll have remember. to go look i i you you probably could be able to find it just search like worms underwear and you've only it'll got like 3.8 million followers so you don't well, know them all individually no well it wasn't even my it was just on the I'm for kidding. you page. I mean, you don't even know how social media works <laughs> james doesn't even know james never been on tiktok in his life <laughs> i watch some of your stuff on tiktok if i ever go you on. ever go like on tiktok but, yeah i was gonna say literally never i don't want to um, go down that wormhole <laughs> that was a good one holding on to that um but this is just i mean i looked at you too because you do this all the time but the worms thing i mean even though it's cruel Technically, it's kind of harmless at the end of the day. I love it. I think it's great. People should be allowed to do that. 100%. <laughs> um, and I just think it's funny that I literally had just heard of someone else the other day doing this. And I just saw a video of a girl. And, you know, everyone's just commenting like, um, this is something you take to your grave. <laughs> and she's, you know, everyone puts If you have the something that you think you need to take to your grave, it's <gasps> Tell actually us. a great call in. Yeah, call in. Yeah, if you think there's something there's you something need to take like, to your grave. To my grave, call in. Call Stop that what in. you're doing right now like she did. Pause. Pause. Call in. Call in. All right. Are you ready for the last secret? We got some good, a good solid poop story. Oh, I like a good poop. You know, story. you can't go wrong with a solid poop. All right. Here we go. Hey, guys. This story is about poop. I was dating a guy for a few months and had started a diet that did not really agree with my belly. So while we were sitting together one morning after a sleepover on the couch, I thought I would let out a tiny little harmless fart. And didn't I shit on the couch? So I immediately run upstairs mortified and text him from upstairs saying, if you want to leave, that is fine. But he was a trooper and I came back down eventually cleaned it up and we moved past it um so we've been together a while now we have a blended family and don't these fucking kids bring up this story of me shitting the couch every single time we meet a new person or at any social function to the point that i've now had to have a family meeting and tell them tell everyone that we are no longer going to discuss this or tell this story because I can't keep reliving it. It's mortifying, it's awful, and I want to let it go. But good news is he's been with me for the last six years and he's awesome. Bye. This was such a funny story. You know, classic shit the couch. Who hasn't? Um, But I love that the kids have found out and now love to bring that up. Like, that's a reason that like always scares me about having kids is like that, that kids repeat everything that you say, you know, and it's like you say one thing in the house and those kids will not let it go. And did you do that as a kid? All the time. (laughs) I know all the time. And it's so funny. I look back on things that you do. It used to do as a kid. I'd be like, Oh my God. Like my mom would yell at me and I'd be like, what's a big deal. And like, now I'm like, Oh my God, no wonder my mom yelled at me. Like, (laughs) I used to call my uncle, he was bald, and i call him Uncle Baldy. His name was Uncle Bobby, and I called him Uncle Baldy. You called Uncle Bob Uncle Baldy? And I thought it was hilarious. Oh, I'm sure. But my mom was like, you cannot call him that. Like, that is actually really mean. I'm like, why? He's bald. And, like, now I look, and now and I'm like, oh, what an asshole. You know? Like, oh, of course funny. he was pissed. Like, don't call me that. You know, he had hair loss. <sighs> it's just funny. Kids are funny. Um, but that is a hilarious story. You know, again everyone's shitting that, yeah and it's a great happily ever after he stayed with you you guys are happy i mean if happy left, family would have just you would have known but the fact that he stayed that guy gets that's got to be major brownie points yeah well yeah you know also, what you're going because didn't she say they were just dating the, somewhat started dating yeah. i'm sure they were together more than like first date but it still sounds like it was very early in the relationship yeah. like he could have cut and run if he needed to right right but 
you guys six years congrats congrats on the blanded family blanded and um that was an amazing story thank you so much for calling in and if you want to call in and leave us a weird secret or weird story you can call in too that speakpipe.com slash weird and proud pod again speakpipe.com slash weird and proud pod always anonymous up to minute and 30 seconds and again i'm curious if there's any nurses i know we have a lot of nurses that follow us so what were your thoughts on the whole cellular memory thing? I need to know more about that. Um, yeah, so keep us supposed And there's also, like, kind of why I also thought it was interesting is we've been kind of talking about dreams and, like, weird dreams. Yes. And I think that's also why this popped up on my algorithm was the whole, like, you know, uh... dreams are kind of a part of it, too. So just some really interesting stuff, and I'm excited to hear what you guys think about it. We love you so much. A couple things, if you wouldn't mind... If you could, please make sure you're subscribed on YouTube. Again, we're really trying to up the YouTube content. That would mean a ton to us. Make sure if you are on YouTube, give this video a thumbs up. Comment below your thoughts. Also, make sure you're subscribed on Spotify and Apple Podcasts. We're now on Amazon, too. I forget what the name of that one is, but for whatever reason you want to listen to it, make sure you're subscribed and give us a five star if you could. It means a whole lot. It's Share takes with, two seconds share it with a friend and share it with a friend be like this is some really weird shit have you ever heard of this and, send and it to them. also on the youtube thing we have and that's why we're not doing it yet we're letting people get there but there's going to be some special things we do on the youtube channel <laughs> special things and we're trying to do some more vlogs we're trying to do some more you know well, exclusive content to youtube that you won't but find like on video, instagram that's because the video capabilities like we We'll have right and longer stuff. form it's just better to do longer yeah. form stuff obviously and sometimes you can't just get it on one reel or one tiktok but anyways we love you guys so much thank you for sticking around thanks for all the support and we love you weirdos love you weirdos bye <laughs>